Hello, hi, what's up? How are you? How are you feeling? What's good? Okie doke. So I want to talk a little bit about a book I just read called Business and Life Lessons from a Black Dragon. And who might this black dragon be? So it's, it's, it was written by Vusi Tembukwayo, um, and it's a very short book. It's a good read. It's a short read. So if you're thinking you can read this book and kind of just jump on the bandwagon of the trajectory of his life, no, that's not happening. But it does um, highlight some insights that you might need to kind of change your thinking patterns. So that's kind of cool that it does that. So it's a very, very short read. It's less than 100 pages. Um, so I'm going to just kind of just uh, give the highlights that I found pretty much. So um, let's start with chapter one called The Gift of Having Nothing to Lose. I feel like he did well in kind of like um, landing the message that if you start from nothing and you are no one, then you only have forward to go right so in other words you have no excuses because you basically had a clean slate so i i i agree with that notion and then there's the next one which is to show your best at your worst i'm just summarizing the chapter titles because i don't want to go into every little thing um but yeah so showing your best at your worst so that's fake it till you make it um dress for the job you want not the one you have that kind of logic Obviously, we've heard these sayings so many times, so why not just assume they're true, I suppose. Then he goes on to speak about chapter three, which is shine, Vusi, shine. So this chapter was quite a lot. So he spoke a little bit about, um, you know, his Model C accent and some of the experiences he's had in his life and all of that. Um, I like a specific part that he mentions. So I'll kind of just highlight it. So he says, even today, the ghost of that self image lingers on, not just in the way we look down on each other, but in the way we look up and tear each other down. In Australia, this practice is so commonplace that it has a name, tall poppy syndrome. The poppy that rises above the field must be snipped down to size in the name of egalitarianism. But in a meritocracy, that is a false premise. Egalitarianism does not mean that everyone must be equal. It means that everyone must be granted an equal chance to prove that they can be better than anyone else, that they can shine brighter. I don't know. What do you think about that? I'm not sure. But I enjoyed reading that. I enjoyed um, yeah, just thinking about that and just remembering things like pull her down syndrome and the likes. So that was interesting. Then he goes on to chapter four, the lie of the land. Um, and of course he continues to speak, uh, surrounding some historic, uh, events, I suppose we can call them events. Um, in South Africa, he speaks a little bit about, um, like he makes some analogies, you know, he makes some interesting anal um, some analogies. For instance, oh goodness, like he speaks about his grandfather and he speaks about if in history, like in, in the past, uh, if we had those opportunities that others had, where would we be today? Will we be where others are today or how would that play out? And I think that's a good question to ask. So just to kind of highlight exactly what he speaks on there, he says space. It all comes down to space. Hundreds of years ago, when the ships came, they were driven by the will of the wind and the philosophy of manifest destiny, the belief that the colonialists on board were doing God's work, that they had the heavenly right to cross the wild ocean and lay claim to whatever they found on the faraway shore. It is time now for us to make our destiny manifest too interesting chapter five he speaks about um to lead is to learn to command the silence i feel like that is self-explanatory you know 
command the silence. Um, I liked uh, an analogy he used where he was speaking about when he was a public speaker, I guess he still is, and he knew how to kind of, you know, like bend the room with quiet, with silence, where silence became a weapon. I enjoyed that. Then he speaks about the attitude adjustment clap. <laughs> that was an interesting way to call that. Uh, I found that quite interesting as well. Um, and yeah, he speaks a little bit about BE and uh, a plane ride he took with someone and a discussion he had with them. I don't want to go into all of that because it didn't really, it didn't really resonate well with me necessarily. Um, and then, okay, we've got, uh, there is no B in team. Okay. And hmm. I mean, I, I feel like I could go through every single chapter and, and kind of highlight all the learnings I got, but that would be like unnecessary because then you could, then you wouldn't read the book, right? So let's just talk about the things that I found fascinating. There is something I highlighted where he says, my dad was a salesman, the best in the business. He would drive all the way from Watville to Venda and Tapazimbi and come back with his boot loaded with the best fresh vegetables money could buy. Then he would sell them door to door. It was as easy as selling candy in a crash. At the end of the day, he would show us his fistful of cash and we would go out uh, for supper to celebrate we had money we were rich except it wasn't our money it belonged to the business the next day the bulk of the takings would be plowed back into buying fresh stock and my dad would be back on the road again and again and again we were survivalists we had food on the table fresh vegetables even for my dad that was enough he didn't want to own the farm me i've always been big on the dreams I don't want to fly business class. I want to own the airline. I don't want to go on holiday. I want to own the island. I don't want to drive a Porsche. I want to own the factory. I don't want to be a survivalist. I want to be a thrivalist. The biggest lie that was ever sold to black people was the lie that they must be satisfied with thinking small. Small business, small prospects, small profits, big lie that speaks volumes um i need not say how much i agree with that paragraph it speaks so many volumes <laughs> right um so then he goes on to chapter nine i skipped past a couple um he speaks about the emperor needing new clothes he speaks about uh twitter lingo and all of that which was kind of interesting then he goes on and he speaks about the iPhone. He speaks about some CEOs. He speaks about BlackBerry versus the iPhone. I think that that landed a very solid message home, um, how that played out. And it also speaks about like how a person needs to be adaptable to change. And a person is kind of like synonymous to a business in the sense that if you do not foresee changes and understand how you need to align with those or even get ahead of those changes you can kind of be erased by time which is exactly what happened um and then he speaks about a letter to africa and who that was interesting and that's kind of how he ends the book i mean there's a couple of lessons i am not going to lie there are a couple of lessons um it's not an entire mentorship program but it does have some gems in terms of like just challenging people's thinking so if that's what you're into if that's what you want to do that's what you want to hear about check it out